Let us look at another example of how to draw a network diagram. We have been given activities from A through J. We have also been given the predecessors for each of these activities along with the times that each of these activities would take in terms of weeks. Activity A does not have any predecessor so it is not dependent on any activity before activity A can start. So clearly activity A is the starting activity of this project. So let's first draw activity A. So let's draw the start event and give it a number 1. Now let's draw an arrow starting from this event number 1 and name this as activity A. Now activity A has been given to take 7 weeks. So let's put the number 7 next to the activity A. Now we have been given that activities B, C, D and E depend on the completion of activity A. So let's draw activities B, C, D and E. So let me first draw the ending event for activity A and the starting event for B, C, D and E. Let's give this the number 2. Now we'll draw four arrows emerging from event 2 representing B, C, D and E. So the first one let's say this is B, second one is C, then D and E. Now B takes 8 weeks so let's put 8 next to B. C takes 10 weeks so let's put the number 10. D takes 6 weeks so let's put the number 6. E takes 2 weeks so let's put the number 2. So we have completed A, B, C, D and E. Now the next activity is F which is dependent on the activities B and C. So here B and C are both emerging from the node 2. Now if we put one node as the finish node for B and C and start the activity F from there thereby representing that F is dependent on the completion of B and C then we will be violating our guidelines for drawing this AOA network which says that two events cannot start from the same event and end at the same event. So here what we can do is we can draw a dummy from one of these activities so let's draw the dummy activity and represent how F can be shown in this network diagram. So I'll draw an event representing end of activity C. Now F is going to emerge from this event. Let's say this is event number 3. Now F is going to emerge from event number 3. But F is also dependent on the completion of B. So if we draw an event here denoting the completion of B and then draw a dummy activity towards 3 then the activity emerging from 3 will mean that it is dependent on the completion of C as well as B. Here I'll number this event as event number 4 and let's draw the activity F. So this is F. Now F takes 5 weeks so let's put 5 next to F. So here we have completed drawing the activity F. Next is activity G. Now activity G is dependent on F 
D and E. So activity G is dependent on F, D and E. Now again if we draw the ending node here for the start of activity G and point both D and E to that node will be violating the guideline that two activities cannot start and end on the same nodes. So what we can do here is point D from 2 to a new event here and draw a dummy activity from E to this new event. So let's try doing that. So let's say this is the starting event for activity G. Let's give this a number 5. So now I need to point D from 2 to 5 and a dummy from E to 5. So I need to change this, this direction of this arrow so that I can point it from 2 to 5. So let me let me do that. So now I have removed the line that I had drawn to represent D and I'll point it from 2 to 5. So this is D and it takes 6 weeks. Now I can draw an ending node here let's say this is 6 and draw a dummy from 6 to 5 so now with this we can draw the activity G let's say this is G which has a duration of 8 weeks so here we had been given that G is dependent on F, D and E and now in this diagram we have G is dependent on F, D and E. So here we have completed activity G. Now next we have been given is activity H which is dependent on the completion of activity E. So we can start activity H from event 6 Let's say this is H and the duration is 7 weeks. So we have completed H. Next is I which is dependent on the completion of activity F. So I which is dependent on completion of activity F. So now the ending event for activity F is 5. Now if I draw a activity like this representing I what this would mean is that I is dependent on completion of F D and E which is not correct because we have been given that I is dependent only on the completion of F so we need to change our representation of F here so F and I have to be represented in such a way that G is dependent on F, D and E and I is dependent only on F. So what if we create another event here and create a dummy from that event to 5 and that event would mark the completion of activity F and from that event then we can start the activity I. So let's try doing that. So what I'll do is I'll remove the activity F and I and then let's see how to create this in a different fashion. Okay. So now I have removed the activity F which was starting from 3 and ending on 5. Now let me create another event here. Let's say this is 7. Now I'll point the activity F from 3 to 7. So this is F 
and then I'll point a dummy activity from 7 to 5. So F takes 5 weeks. So now let's see. One of the conditions for activity G was that it starts at completion of F, D and E. So here G is dependent on the completion of F, D and E. Now the next task is to draw I which is dependent on F and only F. So here if we draw an activity from node 7 it would be dependent only on the completion of activity F. So let's draw I. So this is I and I takes 5 weeks. So this activity represents I which takes 5 weeks to complete. So here we have completed I. The next activity is J which is dependent on the completion of I, G and H. So I, G and H. So we can draw an ending node for I, G and H. Let's give this a number 8 and now from 8 we can draw the activity J which takes 2 weeks. Now since J is the last activity of the project on which no other activities is dependent on we can draw the finish node and give this the number 9. So this is the network diagram for the activities given to us for the project.